Yeah, I like TTPD. To Timpa Dutterfly. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Are you hydrated? Did you sleep well? Do you have vision? Right now we are 36 hours removed from the launch of the latest Taylor Swift album, The Tortured Poets Department. By the time you see this, it'll probably be a couple of days after it, maybe a week. Uh, so far, local infrastructure is still standing. Roads are not blocked off. No government buildings have been attacked. Uh, so hopefully that is still the same in the days to come. This is gonna be a little different. This is gonna be fairly off the cuff. I was not planning on talking about this record. Um, I was planning on talking about uh, Reputation, Taylor's version, whenever that comes out. Hopefully that's this year. Um, yeah, I, re I really wanted to do like an intense dive into that record and the whole ecosystem, if you will, surrounding it. Um, but this new record that has come out has been stirring up a lot of emotions in me that that video will likely cover. Um, so consider this like the, the appetizer to that video whenever that comes out. The other reason this is gonna be off the cuff is because I've actually already made this video twice. I made it when Midnight's came out and I made it a few weeks back when I talked about Jacob Collier. Both of those videos um, have aged pretty well. I mean, the Jacob one, that's like two weeks old right now. so. You know, we'll see about that one. But I think the Midnight's video has aged especially well in context with this new record. I've been getting this feeling like we've done all this before, not just when it comes to the discourse. There's a, a bitterness to this record. The same bitterness that stood tall and proud on Reputation, this time soaking itself into the cracks. In a certain light, both Midnight's and Reputation are sad albums, consumed by an exhaustion or even hate towards a sizable chunk of the population watching your every move. And if I did something a little bit more produced, this video would just be uh, regurg reg uh, regurgitations? Regurgitations of the Midnight's video and the Jacob video. Let's start with this. Y'all hate this record, huh? I think one reason people were especially primed to hate on this record was because the day it came out, it was revealed to be a double album. Um, admittedly, when I saw that, I immediately felt tired. Um, and then especially when I saw the song title that was um, Thank You Amy, but the K-I and M were all capitalized. I can't go back to that place. You can't put me back there. I've done too much work on myself. Except here's the thing, and this might be a bit of a controversial take. I don't think this is a double album. Here's why I think that. I went to Target the day that this record came out, and of course on their, you know, in their music section, they had Tortured Poets Department, vinyl and CDs all over the shelves, um, but they were not selling the anthology. You know what I mean? Like they were not selling the double album, they were selling the bass album. And I think uh, there were four CD versions with like different covers and each one had a different bonus track that came from the anthology, but they were not selling the anthology. This makes me think we are in for one of three scenarios. One, this is not a double album and it's just, you know, marketing and what Taylor is saying to justify another 15, 16 tracks being put out onto the market. Uh, two, this is a double album, but that decision, the decision to make it a double album was made very late into the game, like after physical copies had been made. Or three, this is a double album and it's just right now they are not selling the full package. Like maybe they'll put it out physically in a couple of months so that they can, you know, double dip with Taylor fans. Hey, I don't blame them. You know what I mean? If they have the chance to do it, take it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's another question. I don't think a lot of you care about music. Oh, that was a statement. <laughs> this whole cycle, or I should say this whole like 36 hour time span has felt very depressing, if I'm gonna be real. Um, like I mentioned before, there were a lot of people who were just very excited to shred this record to pieces. And that's not a defense of Taylor. Like she's a, a billionaire at this point. She's a celebrity, she can take it. Like I, if you wanna if you wanna fire your arrows at her, her go for it, I, I don't care. Um, but it is a little disappointing to be reminded that like most of the people in this game don't actually care about the music. Or maybe that's a little, you know, uh, strong of it. They care more about the celebrity of it all. Or maybe that's just the easier thing to talk about. When the album first got announced at the Grammys, I saw some writer folk who were like, hey, hire me on so I can pan this record for you. And it's like, isn't that a little depressing for the folks at home that you're like already saying you hate a record before you've heard even a second of the music contained within? Like, if you want to write your pan of Taylor Swift, go for it. Like, it's, that that's whatever. Like, do what you want. But like, 
don't know. Like, I, I try to have a platform here that is, like, more focused on the music than it is on the celebrity. And even I find that, like, you just have to talk about the celebrity of it sometimes because talking about music is hard. It's funny, too, because I was rereading a bit of uh, Chuck Klosterman's The 90s, and he has this bit where he's talking about Titanic and some of the, you know, industry realities we all like to say we believe but don't seem to actually fully commit to. And one of them is uh, some people care about acting, but most people care about actors. I happen to believe that some people care about music, but most people care about musicians. Most people care about celebrities. Cause like, why else would the discourse be so focused on, you know, Maddie Healy and Travis Kels and Joe Alwyn and Lucy Dacus and like all these other people when it's like not actually about the music itself, which is unfortunate. I just think that's unfortunate, a little depressing, but that's just me. While we're talking about the people though, it does seem like that is the main focus of this record or at least the discourse behind it. Um, and it reminds me of um, when I said in my Jacob Collier video that oftentimes when you reach a certain level of celebrity, you get boiled down to one thing or one personality trait. Uh, Jacob Collier was the music theory guy. Taylor Swift is the, you know, the dating girl, you know what I mean? It's like all of the songs have to be about some ex and it's a matter of like finding out the clues or at least that's the, you know, stereotype that like all the songs are about that. And in fairness, like Jacob has leaned into the music theory stuff, Taylor has definitely leaned into it. I imagine because you know, it's the thing that people pay attention to, so at some point you've got to give the people what they want. But I think it has led to this overarching criticism that, um, in some instances, the lore of Taylor Swift is the thing that bogs the music down. And in some cases, I can agree with that, but I've seen a lot of people say it when it comes to the Tortured Poets Department. And I gotta say, really? This record? Did I, like, go into a coma? wake up and accidentally listen to Reputation Taylor's version? Because with that record, that one was consumed by the lore that I did not give a damn about. And like, the lore is there on this record, don't get me wrong. Like, the title track is definitely Maddie Healy coded. Uh, thank you, Amy, with the dumbass title. That's Kim. Uh, so High School is apparently based or inspired by uh, Travis Kels. Okay, cool. That's three songs. That's three songs out of 31. I don't think that that's a big deal. If those are the places where the lore is in your face, I, I will take it any day over like reputation where like the lore is half of that record. And you have to like specifically try to get past the lore to get to the good songwriting, which is common for a Taylor Swift album because she is a good songwriter. You respect the craft when you see it. I have to genuinely ask like, are we all just really terminally online? about this sort of thing, about the idea that like Taylor is this monolith who cannot be judged. Cause I go on the internet every day and I see people judging her every day. It's actually very common. I remember when I did my CD listening experiment back in January, I found it shockingly easy to avoid the latest Ariana Grande song, Yes And. Um, and like, maybe they're not at the same level, Taylor and Ariana, but I feel like they're close in the pop star world. Um, it turns out you actually can avoid a lot of this discourse if you just don't go online or if you just don't care or look for it. Like, I think doing that experiment made me lose a lot of my sympathy with the people who are like, uh, bu building her up to be some like insane monolith. Here's the other thing too. I think the idea that she is some insane monolith is a very American focused, mindset um, because I talk with people who don't live in the U.S. and they say she's not that big outside of the U.S. She's big, of course, like she's still a massive pop star, but like Dua Lipa I've heard is bigger, Coldplay is bigger, The Weeknd is bigger. Like I do really think that this like obsession with Taylor is an American thing on both ends, whether you like adore her to no end or you like want to see her metaphorically ripped apart by the wolves. There's just such a hunger for negativity online. Or some people might call it criticism, but it's really negativity. Like you have to disassociate the thing that you want in the world versus how people will respond to it. The internet is a bunch of hungry jackals. And if you give them something, they will take it for their worst purposes. That might be the most cynical way to put it, but like for God's sake, when um, Cowboy Carter came out, I saw some people complaining that like, no one is brave enough out there to, um, you know, criticize Beyonce. Like there isn't any good criticism of her or this record. 
12 hours after it came out. And you know what happened? Within the weekend that that record came out, I did start seeing critiques, very well-worded critiques about Cowboy Carter and what it's trying to represent and how it is sometimes limited by that by having to be a product made by a pop star. It came out, the criticism came out, you just had to fucking wait. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I should do this more often. I will also say about lyrics, uh, there's the GTA line, there's the Charlie Puth line, there's the 1830s line, and there's the Weed and Little Babies line. I almost said Sexy Babies. Weed and Little Babies line. Um, sure, they're all goofy when you take them out of context, but like, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. It's like, it's music. If you divorce the lyrics, if you take the lyrics out of the song, sure, they might look goofy, but they're not necessarily meant to be taken out of the song. It's all one piece together. It'd be like if you tried to judge a car by taking off all the wheels and seeing if it still moves. Probably won't. Anyway, I apologize that it has taken me this long to get to the music itself. Uh, one of the unfortunate things about a Taylor Swift album release is that, at least in, you know, when it first comes out, the least interesting thing about it is the music itself. Uh, this seems to be no exception, but this time, I do like the music. I definitely like it more than Midnight's. I like how it's a blend of Midnight's and a little bit more folklore. I definitely like that Aaron Desner is back on more of the main album songs, and then he's like pretty much on most of the anthology tracks. Come on down to Desner Town, everyone. Take a look at both of the brothers. I remember with Midnight's, I had this distinct feeling that it felt uh, burnt out, or it felt weary, or it felt um, overly consumed by stardom and the desire to just be like a normal person. I do really think this continues in that way, uh, lyrically. Like there's a lot more of that like text about like, I think Taylor Swift is just sick of being Taylor Swift, which honestly, if I was in her position, I wouldn't blame her at all. Um, but I do also like how, even though like the lyrics are a bit more blunt about that exhaustion, I do also think the music itself has more life to it, more energy than what Midnight's was doing. It definitely is that same sonic palette that, you know, Midnight's was going for folklore to some extent, like a lot of the Jack Antonoff produced stuff with the mix of the Aaron Desner stuff. Like it's definitely not like breaking out of the production she's been on for the past couple of records. That said, I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with an artist finding a lane and exploring it to the fullest potential. Like, you find that really as any artist gets older, like their early days are where they experiment and play with genre, but then once they find a sound that they're comfortable in, they tend to ride that out longer. Like, I'm thinking of, um, since their careers are basically tied for the rest of eternity, Kanye West, you know, like, his early records, like, none of them sounded exactly the same. Like, there were distinct eras, if you will, of, uh, you know, the sound he was chasing. But then by Life of Pablo, he had been basically doing this hodgepodge of all of the elements that had came before, along with introducing some younger blood um, into it. Um, but you're not going to get something as completely... Um, wild as the move from like 808s and Heartbreak to Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy to Yeezus. You know what I mean? Um, it also kind of reminds me of Prince in the fact that like, you know, his early records definitely explored and pioneered soul and funk and R&B and pop music in that way. But then once you hit the 90s in his career, that man found his groove and he basically stuck with it for the rest of his career. Of course, yeah, there are obviously some differences between the records, like, or you'll have one like Rainbow Children, which is a complete uh, left field turn, but like, come uh, Gold Experience, Diamonds and Pearls, Musicology, uh, 3126, is that what it's called? 3124? That one with the three in it. Um, all of those records, like, those do sound similar. They do. Like, once you find that niche of yours, if you will, where you find the most joy in playing around with ideas, you tend to stick with it. I think that's something that, like, most artists end up doing. So I'm not surprised Taylor is doing it here. And I don't think that's a bad thing that she is sticking to one particular sound. There's also nothing saying she won't change it down the road. Like, again, that's the sort of fault of doing these sort of, like, quick take reactions is that they are so bound to the time in which they happen. Whereas, like, I prefer to look at things in the longer term of, like, 
like the long arc of an artist's career. I'm throwing in some extra voiceover since I've had a few days more to mull the album over. I think this is Taylor's attempt at a Lana Del Rey album, or at look at what it'd be like if Lana had made Midnight's or even Folklore, a project that tries to build mythos and melodrama from the lyrics with music that creates this enveloping, if somewhat unsettling atmosphere. I still don't truly believe this is a double album, but it can often be as intrinsically messy as one. Highlights for me include But Daddy I Love Him, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, Florida, Clara Bow, So High School with the production reminiscent of Boy Genius and Early National, and The Black Dog. The rest is acceptable to me. I don't think I will be listening to the full package again for a while, but I will revisit the songs that I like. I guess in summation, like, Tortured Poets Department is fine. I, I don't think it comes close to the top Taylor Swift records. It doesn't beat Folklore. It doesn't beat Red. It doesn't beat uh, 1989. Like, it, do it doesn't beat any of those. But it's like, I don't outright hate it like so many other people seem to be doing. Um, I hate putting numbers on things, and I will probably regret doing this, but like, if it helps with like, how you understand where I'm coming from, if Midnight's to me was a six, this is a seven. There you go. It's not some masterpiece. I just don't outright hate it. I'm not out here with my uh, fangs snarling in the brisk cold as I wait to, you know, the, the eating metaphor. You know what I mean? You, 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 you know, you know, you've eaten food before. Here's the last piece that is really going to come up in that Reputation Taylor's Version video that I make, but I'm going to state it here. A lot of people really are feeling the overabundance of Taylor, and I've seen on Twitter people being like, this is the turning point. This is, you know, the, really the beginning of her downfall. I'm sorry, but believing that would require me to believe that Twitter matters. You know, for what it, for all it's worth, maybe in like the weeks after this record, it will turn out that it didn't sell as well, or we didn't really get any big hits, which is another question too, because I don't know like what the big hit from this one is going to be. I imagine it's going to be Fortnite, because that's the one that has the music video with it. We'll see. Honestly, I think the, if you will, the not the downfall necessarily, because that sounds, you know, too mean, but it's going to be like, li listen, the Eras Tour is wrapping up soon. Uh, I imagine Taylor's gonna wanna take a break after it because she's been touring for like two years straight. But this idea that like her downfall is coming or there's gonna be like this big exodus of fans, I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think with any, like with most major pop stars, it, and their downfall, if you will, does not come with like any sort of major explosion or anything like that. It's gonna be long drawn out and kind of boring. It'll just be a, a point where like in a few years, it's like, oh, remember like when Taylor Swift ruled the world? Oh, no, that was fun. She's still around. She's still doing stuff. Maybe she's doing, you know, movies and, you know, because I think she wants to do that once the Eras Tour is wrapped up. Um, but like, she just isn't as big as she was, which isn't a bad thing. It's just simply like how popular culture moves and shifts and all that sort of stuff. The, the long arc of it, like I said, like, remember the nineties when like Spice Girls were huge or the two thousands when like Michelle Branch or Black Eyed Peas were huge. None of them are as big now as they were back then, which is fine. That's not a, a bad thing. It's just simply how culture moves and shifts and how tastes change and shift. It's not gonna be some like giant blowout. You know what I mean? The closest we ever got to that was Reputation, which is why I find that record such an interesting thing to look back on and why I'm going to do a huge video on it. It'll be very interesting to look back at this period in like five years, especially 10 years, and see where it sits in the overall uh, story of Taylor Swift, like the overall story of her discography. That'll be fun. I look forward to a time when talking about Taylor Swift will be fun to close, if I may paraphrase um, Stephen Hyden from Up Rocks. Can we all be a little bit more normal about her? And I'm not talking just about like the stereotypical Swifties and the people who love and adore her, but like the people who just absolutely despise her and her music. Can we all calm down? a little bit. None of this is that serious. We're talking about pop music on the internet. Like, bring it down a little bit. This this should be fun. <laughs> For now, let me know what you think of Tortured Poets Department in the comments. Uh, I would definitely love to talk about something uh, less controversial next time, which is why I'll be checking in on the state of hip-hop.